so we're going to get started. Um, can folks online hear me okay? Somebody would. Yeah, Heather, can, can you hear me? Yep. Yep, I can hear you fine. Yeah. She's just not just the volume. Might even be just the. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and cruise through them. Let's get started. So um, thanks, everyone, um, for being here. Um, I'm going to go through some slides, and then we can kind of talk about what we've gone through, um, but just sort of a higher review of what's in the capital plan, what we're planning for future state. Um, and so without further ado, we'll get started. That was done. Oh, OK. Great. <laughs> well, it was me. I, got it. I didn't get it off quick enough. That also means when it's working. Yes, that's great. Let's see if I can get to the next slide here. Okay, um, so uh, this is an overview of our plan. If folks can see this, I'm actually gonna, while well, this is up, just dim the lights here. Oh, I can do that. Um, that could be useful. <laughs> great. <laughs> Um, so as you can see in FY24, we're level fund with FY23 um, for investments in capital. Um, and that's you know, namely um, due to some pressure in the budget. Um, we're not able to get up to the 2.4 in 24 that we were aiming for. However, we were able to hold the line. Um, and so what you can see here is what well, we've gotten debt service. So we've had um, some debt come online um, from work that we put on the table last year. Um, then we've got our annual capital, which is projects. So that's about $640,000. And then the equipment is $363,500. Um, we can give you, and we'll in future slides, a breakdown of what um, each of these annual capital and equipment items are. Um, and then as you move on um, through future years, we've built out the capital plan um, to get up to the 2.4, which was a, a previous target steady state. And then from there, um, we're looking to grow the plan by inflation. You'll notice that it's 4% here on the chart uh, towards the bottom of the chart. Um, and what that is, is it's blended. Um, looking back at 2019, when we were last at steady state, and then uh, blending it with the future years to come up with an average inflation rate. Um, is we do think that it's likely that um, CPI will start to come down, which we're already starting to see. Um, so we've grown each year by 4%. So our goal is to get up to 2.4 in 2025 and then move on accordingly um, throughout future years. Another thing to note um, is in 25, there is additional debt service for a uh, fire ladder truck. That's $1.2 million. So it's a pretty big um, investment and that would be over 20 years. Um, the age of the ladder truck is at the point now where you know, they likely will get some grant funding for it. So we've been waiting um, for that uh, to turn over. So then this next slide is representative of really where we've come from in 23. We had some really huge investments in capital last year. Um, so you can see at the top there about $30 million, which is you know really unparalleled, um, and so just the breakdown for those those items. Um, we've got some large projects um, that we went out to bond with. The biggest item there is phase two of the wastewater treatment facility, um, but then we had another large um, project planned for East State Street. Both of those projects haven't started yet, um, so those will come online um, pretty soon um, in 24 and 25. Um, and then we've also got some major investments that we're still working on getting underway, such as the um, Main and Barry Street intersection and the street lighting. Um, and then in addition to this, uh, we also have um, some ARPA funding that's identified here where we restored delayed projects. And then we've got the CIP projects from last year, equipment from last year, and then the reserve that we used. Um, we ended up with a little bit of money left on the bottom line just based on some of the projects that didn't go forward. Um, and so we opted to use that. So there is still money out there within capital that will be infused in the community that we haven't seen yet. Um, and so part of our recommendation in this, this construct is that we kind of need to hold the line, do what we said we were going to do, and then take it from there. Um, because the investments that we've made in 23 are huge. Um, and we want to kind of see those come to pass. Um, and, you know, even if we were to take on more, uh, 
uh, money for capital, it you know it comes down to really being able to focus on the projects that we have on the table. We also want to be able to leverage federal funding, um, which we are working on doing as well. Um, so then this just breaks down where that 435, the reserve is set to go. Some of this has already been purchased um, and accounted for. We are still seeing delays in equipment. Um, so some of these items have been um, put out to bid and selected, but not um, delivered yet. Um, and then also this is an investment in um, the pavement condition index. Um, so we are making some improvement there. Um, and then the dam study, um, which we have not yet commissioned. And then just uh, looking at the community-based projects, which are now on tap, um, and you'll see um, tonight in part of the budget presentation is sort of a breakdown of the ARPA dollars, where we're at year to date on spend and what's been allocated. Um, but just going down through this list, um, this is the second um, sort of tranche of funding that we received this past year in September. Um, so we, and this is the plan for it. Um, so we get community outreach, um, housing services for vulnerable populations, maybe a public restroom get to be determined. Um, and then we've got some investments in um, infrastructure, uh, EV charging station. And then we've also invested in barrier recovery residents for moms and kids, which we've already put out the door um, once we get these funds in. So now we're moving on into what we've got on the table. And I apologize, it's a little bit small. Um, it's the way the tables, I need to make them bigger. Um, so next time for sure. Um, so just looking at this list, you can kind of see what was requested for projects and what we actually have in the plan. This number that we have in the plan right now, the $640,000 or so for projects is way skinnier than the 1.8 million that was requested, um, but we are still in a constrained environment. We don't necessarily have um, more federal funding yet um, to use. And um, we're also just trying to stay within alignment with what uh, we do have resources for. So just going down the line um, to be at steady state, Paving, and I should also mention that as part of the packet that was sent out, there are um, detailed plans that Public Works put together. So if you have any questions related to those plans, um, I've got the folks here to answer those questions specifically. But um, for the purposes of this list, uh, looking at the 875 there, that would be for steady state. Um, and what is in the budget right now is 118.5, and that would be really to protect what we have um, doing fog sealing and the like. Um, there's a, a pretty sizable investment in route road and the bridge. Um, so there's $200,000 here. We did get some grant money, um, $175,000. Um, and then we get sort of the total project cost there of um, 507. And Zach, is that the total cost so far? Is there any no, more? It's, it's, uh, it's additional 200. We did something like 675, just about yeah. 332 out of ARPA plus the, the uh, grant that we received with 175, which brought us up to a total of 507. And then with inflation and all the prices that have increased, we've got a new estimate that brought us up in 670. So we round that up to um, you know an additional 20 to 30 thousand dollars to cover any other loans that we had. So uh, we're more out of the 700 thousand dollar total project costs, which is why. We have the 200,000 uh, just to make sure that that project gets completed. Thanks. Yeah, sure. Well, could you just like explain the um, paving line? Like, what's the rationale there? Yeah, so the rationale, like when we get down to the very bottom of you have this much money and this much money to work with, uh, we took the things that we were kind of already on the hook for. And unfortunately, back in between the other unknowns, right? So we knew we had to complete route this year. So that was one of the first ones that was selected. So we put that money, we put forward that money first. And then the next one that we had was the 80,000 that we'll see in the sidewalks, which the state paving contract is coming to for me too, from Darren King out the wayside and over to Capitol Pia. And as part of that, we'll be on the hook for $80,000 worth of participating talks to the city. So that's the next one that we selected. And then there's um, the transportation stuff, but uh, we're working on a couple of design it's grant back money. So unfortunately, I mean, we would love to be at that 875 number, but uh, the reality is when we have decisions to make, we kind of went with what we were already on the hook for, what we we're obligated, and then kind of filled in those. So, 
But we will be seeing so with like Keith A Street and stuff, and then that will be a huge project. Like just like from your last slide of what will actually mm -hmm. happen and like what is the community even seeing for right. Projects? So I think I think that's so that's an important consideration. So the East State Street probably won't get paid next year, but they'll see that will begin and that will ultimately result in that being paid from. And the other thing that people will see is even though the state's doing it is the Memorial Drive Route 2 from you know the whole length from Deer Cream to the, the wayside. So that's gonna be a huge paving improvement in the center of town along with East State Street and then some of the smaller streets. And we still have some projects we didn't get to, right? That are still State Street CSO projects. So like our whole main corridor is going to be jam-packed as it is with the paving project, the sewer project, the, the East State Street reconstruction project. So if there was any year to be late on paving, it's obviously it's year because we're going to be paving five miles of the class one roadway. So what you can see is they're still going to see a lot of road work being done. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other reality is it's like, how do you manage traffic? How do you navigate the city when you have so much going on? Mm -hmm. Right? It's it's to be even more much bigger task. <laughs> and you know, if if we had been able to, I mean, some of this has to do with we talked about at the beginning of the meeting. Part of this is this is based on the funding we're saying we have, but if you want to recommend that this amount goes up, obviously then that affects the overall budget. So that this is kind of like the preview of that. I mean, in, I think any new money that we had from any source would go into data uh, if it was appropriate, especially the annual money. It's not really bonding for paving doesn't make a lot of sense, but in. And is there other, if you'd like to, yeah. I mean, it feels like based on what you're describing, it's a pretty massive project. Like, it's going to be a lot of work. Right. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be, I mean, it's a, you know, I mean, paving is usually done by a contractor, yeah. but it still requires the supervision and all that kind of thing. You know, I mean, we do always wish we could do more. I think, as is, you know, our rationale for this is. You know, we had a, we did a huge amount of paving this year, and we will be seeing to, you know, East State Street be under you know State Street. Those will be getting paved afterward, so people will see work and they will see progress. Uh, they always do more. Um, we'll talk about this a little bit more tonight, but you know, if we were to go ahead with, um, if we if you choose to go ahead with the sales tax proposition. And if it passes and the state signs it, we would probably get about a half a year's revenue in this current is in this next fiscal year. That's what we looked at last time, which you know, we can't budget for any of it because um, we don't know we're gonna get it. Um, but if it did, then that would be a pretty sizable windfall that we could also then put towards additional paving project and also put some just toward our to replenish our fund balance. So that you know, we have some places. Potentially, we could go to, but with the with where we're at now, that's all just along with everything that's going. On. You know, that bridge project is is a must, um, and yet it only serves two or three houses, right? But you can't get a fire and truck across. You're going to get a wall. <laughs> you know, there we have to do it, but it's sucking up the resources. Um, so, uh, Zach mentioned uh, the transportation pieces here related to uh, infrastructure, um, the dog river scoping study for 12,000 and then the 41,000 for the Berry Street Recreation Path. Um, and then the sidewalks on Route 2. Um, and then you can see we get on to, you know, areas within the budget that, you know, typically have been in the capital plan, but aren't, are, aren't in this version um, because we cut them to be able to get to target. Um, so we've got, you know, we usually invested in downtown um, benches or some sort of um, project related to Montpelier Alive. Um, project management is usually a thing within um, CAP that then we would, you know, pull in house. Um, cemetery, there's some slope drainage work that needs to be done um, that would just need to be either done or observed some other way or, you know, with in house work. Um, IT infrastructure, you know, down slightly from, 
you know, the requested amount, not still about $50,000, but those, those are security enhancements and also some of our um, software packages that we run. Um, and then for buildings and grounds, there is $100,000 in here uh, for ADA. And mostly that's that's here for the elevator replacement in City Hall. Um, so that's the second installment of that. And so hopefully that'll help be able to get that work done in 24. We've got some money that was set aside in 23. Um, and then the $40,000 um, on the bottom line here is for level two or three chargers for power upgrades for net zero, um, probably in or around the downtown area. To Area, area. I want to say corridor and area at the same time. <laughs> so, and that's what is on the list um, for this um, six hundred and forty thousand dollars or so. So, I'm, the next slide is going to be equipment. And so, if there are any other questions at this point, I'll keep going. Um, so, then this is what we have on tap for our equipment purchases. The total amount slotted here is three hundred and sixty-three-five. Um, for fire, we've got um, some air bottles that we'll be replacing. Um, last year, we had restored some of this with ARPA funding, but in order to meet the baseline, we need to have it in. Um, parks annual funding, you can see that usually um, for equipment purchases and investments, it's at 25,000, so it's knocked down to 15. Um, they usually have an annual tree um, equipment budget of 10,000, and that's just zeroed out here, um, but still, you know, needed. Um, and then, you know, moving on down the line, uh, Public Works, you can see on the sheet the items that um, they have identified um, for replacement. And actually, we wanted to, to go there, we can go through the list of equipment. Um, and then the last thing on this list is the $52,000 or so for um, for police for their fleet. Um, and this is sort of down from what they really would need um, for a hybrid option, which would be about 75. Um, and then further down on this list, there are some investments in recreation um, at the pool, repaving and resurfacing the pool um, and the tennis courts is just not in here. Um, and then also potentially putting disc golf up at um, the country club road site, which would be a nice amenity to have for sure. Um, so those are items that were put forward that we didn't put in this version. Um, then another need that will come up um, even in future years um, and maybe something that we consider longer term um, is a, a bucket truck for parks and for public works. Um, and, you know, with all the tree work that's needed, um, something that we've had in the past that we no longer have access to because, um, you know, it's it's not no longer able to be fixed. Um, so I'll give it a minute here and hopefully that comes back. Um, maybe. Um, but there we go. And while that's happening, the um, items that were in the public works plan, um, there's there's a couple of trucks and a wing truck um, that were noted as part of that 2765424. Um, and so this is a summary of things, high level items that are not funded in this plan um, in 24. Um, so one of the items that came forward and has come forward for the last couple of years is the gas pumps at public works. Um, they're in pretty rough shape um, and need to be replaced. Um, Cumming Street um, is bumped into 2025, um, but you know it's not in 24 like it had originally been. Um, the snowblower, it's been deferred from 24 to 25. Dump truck um, deferred to 25. So as you can see, there's some been some shifts to, to spread things out over um, the plan. But I should have noted at the beginning with that first sheet is, Last year, we didn't build out um, a trend or a plan beyond 23 because that was the end of the plan. And we decided not to do that because of just how volatile things were. Um, and so we've done that now. So you're seeing some of that spread happen. But then we also, you know, there's a real need for equipment and capital projects. So you're also kind of seeing that here. Um, so the next thing, um, like you drive is deferred, but a year has not been identified. Gaylord, also same thing. And then the fire ladder truck we mentioned, we actually did um, put it into 25 to be borrowed for. Um, and so that would be $85,000 or so over 20 years. Um, but the life of that truck would support um, that kind of financing term. Um, and then, you know, considering future um, net zero funding. So with the sustainability coordinator position, we are looking at more and more projects that we can do to achieve the net zero goals. And so this year is also kind of like a level set 
and a planning evaluation year to kind of see how we can get the most out of our money, um, which then follows up with a capital needs assessment. Um, we have a lot of um, infrastructure that we need to invest in, you know, with our buildings. Um, and so it's just coming with a plan to get that done. And then um, one thing that's not in here, which is, you know, part of, you know, our green economy is trail building um, for parks and that we did have some investments last year. And it's something that, you know, um, if we're investing in outdoor recreation, we do need um, year over year. So these are the items that, you know, are not in um, right now um, and are needed, you know, and again, sort of the bucket truck also is not listed here, but that's another thing that's, you know, a high priority. Um, so that's the end of the prepared slides, um, but th that's that's where we are with this particular plan. Um, and so we can um, take this whichever way you'd like um, to maybe look at the slides before we need to talk about any of the items that um, were, were in or out. If you, what you think about the funding level, going back to this, the first slide and thinking about how much we're investing categorically, whether it's in projects or equipment. Um, and then ultimately, you know, finalizing your recommendation to go forward. Um, and so I'm gonna actually go back to the first slide just to kind of show the plan um, so that people can see it. And so um, just taking a look at this, um, you know, and thinking about if this level fund over 23 is something based on the current workload investments we've made in the past, that would be supported by this committee or not. And as you can see, there's two key factors here. One is just the huge increase in debt service based on, and so that, you know, when you keep saying total dollars, that it's almost a one for one debt service going up and the annual capital going down. Um, and then the fact that we had really planned to be at the two point, you know, two point four or something between two point one five and two point four this year. And given the overall budget, we weren't able to do that. Um, so that's you know, so that's what happens. We set the financial target and then fit the projects and funding to it. Um, the other piece I, we didn't mention, and I'll be mentioning it in the budget thing, but it, it really does affect here, and that is Confluence Park. Uh, and I mentioned that because in this past year, you know, we had six hundred thousand dollars in a in a bond to put our share in. The estimate for that project is now up to almost three million. I told you two million a couple weeks ago, it's almost three million. Um, so I think there's a sort of a fair question on the table is whether we're going we should go forward with that project. And uh, so where it's at now is final plans are getting finalized and final estimate at some point that will come to the council to show you the plan and to give you the final estimate you'll give it a go and I'll go or whatever. Um, but we we need to put on the ballot this year authorization to change some of the wording from that bond item last year anyway because of the pellet burner at DPW Grudge. We want to make it broader to allow for other renewable energy type use and because it was so specific last year. So we could also address the uh, that 600000 so one option is to kind of have some broader language and then we'll be able to figure out, you know, that could that could be a significant, for example, net zero uh, investment. We could use that and say, if that's what you chose to do. Um, could probably do everything we needed to do with the garage to get that all done. So not decisions you have to make now other than if, as we go through this process into January, what we'll, the ballot item to change the ballot item to change last year's ballot item wording. But that you don't have to actually make a decision until you're presented with that real number, which is something we consider that as another potential. Or we just don't let the, you know, the other thing is, you know, if we didn't do the project, we can just say we're not going to issue $600,000 worth of debt. And, and that also works. So, yeah. Uh, or we could go ahead with our share of the project and let people fundraise. So there's, a, there's a lot of options to, you know, presuming we wouldn't do it, but it certainly is a different. Financial, the scope of that project is a lot different than when we first thought it was going to be a half a million dollars. Than a million. So, so the language on that, that might be set until after the project, whatever we modify. 
correct. Yeah, we would we would put we would amend last year's bond language. Um, we certainly we have to specifically do it with regard to the the DPW heat, but you know we might want to just think about a way to amend all of it. So you could still go ahead and do it if you want, but just give us flexibility. Once the voters pass that, then we have the authority to issue those bonds for the, the now eligible bonds. But it's something to think about as we go forward. We could possibly the air market to deal with some of our bonds. We could. Yeah. I mean, there's any good, right. It's, you know, I think it's right. How do you, and, and are they something right? Is that something that, I think the, the main thing is to make sure that if it's what if we were to reuse that six hundred thousand dollars, is it something that makes sense from a policy perspective to issue as a bond versus uh, shorter term? Like paving, definitely not. But right, if we were going to build a public bathroom, we would do something like that. Then yeah, it would make sense to finance it or redo the equipment barn and all those things at DPW. So I think there's a lot of, we, we have no shortage of projects that we can put money to. No, no, perfect. Um, I mean, I think my overall reaction is like, given the budget <laughs> way to go forward, a lot of, even though this is like, any state, given all the work that we've done here, yeah, it's just like all the work. Good, like there's a lot that's not. Um, I guess, like, my one question is how, like, with the federal funding, like, how clear is it at this point? Like, which buckets are it's still not, not clear at all? So um, I mean, I guess I'm just trying to think of like there's the, the wish list, like which of those might be eligible in the next few years, like for that out like that in terms of like the priority stuff into the wish list as opposed to like let's move forward and make it that we probably not going to get that year. Things are likely eligible, but there might be an opportunity like that. The only real clarity we've heard is that there's probably more in water and sewer than anything else, which is good. We have a lot of work to do. But um, other than that, it's still a mystery. Whatever is that like? Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, like, there, I don't know the time. Grants and everything. Five hundred thousand, and like there's some like the people plan that meets their criteria things. So I think like here, um, but even though that looks low for this year, I think that could make sense to get ourselves a date. Our our task tonight is to come up with a recommendation and a strategy for taking out money. Right. So, what well, are, so so there's doing? sort of two questions. One is, you know, this is the amount of money that's currently in the, open, the, the budget presentation that will the big picture. Right. So if this committee says we want to make a pitch for more money to the full council or less, um, then you could do that. And then, of course, there'll be the discussion of how do we we just raise taxes, do we cut something that seems that kind of thing? So that's sort of number one is what do we want to do about the total? And then number two is okay, whatever that total is, what's in in it? In, in that are you satisfied with the logic of what's in there? Uh, yeah, more questions if you'd like to see more options or move stuff from the not funded list to the funded list. So if I were not a member of City Young. Right. Um, I would be advocating for this to be more money mm -hmm. and to be making greater investments in public works. Um, but as someone who has to decide on the budget as a whole, I don't feel like I can make a very well informed recommendation about this particular piece right now without seeing the whole thing and sort of figuring out how it all goes together. So, so I don't think that as a committee member, I'm going to advocate for any change to this. 
because it takes you a lot of time, but you're, you know, it looks like a good plan. Um, but when it comes time for us to look at the budget as a whole, um, this seems to me like an area where we might not want to look the fund this year, but we might want to do that. And then maybe there are other things that need to be adjusted in the account, but I don't know what those would be right now. But, I don't think you'd have disagreement from anybody in this room that there ought to be more money in this account. No, no question. Like I said, we started the whole budget process at the 2.4. And at one point, we kind of had half the difference. And at the end, it was like, well, let's try to at least keep what we had last year as we don't go down. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's, I think you're right. It comes choices of what's in and what's out. It, unless you want to go out, which is always a choice, too. And this also team balance with personnel, what's manageable. Yeah, I mean, paving projects, well, there's not as high a level effort staff as there are for people to work because there's so much going on impact to people and the variation of the budget themselves so much longer. Um, you know, so I think we could probably take on the paving work. I don't know that we could take on more. Building projects to the uh, state street, state street. Could the city take on the residents take on more paving? Would be my question. It's going to be a, a lot of uh, in if their we, face. If we were going to do that, we'd be strategic on what we selected. We're not going to pick something in the downtown corridor where all that traffic is going to be put. We'd be going out into an outer neighborhood and doing some of the the methods that. Would not really interfere or impact the bigger projects that are there. You have some in top of your head that you would add? So, right now, uh, like the big ones, and a lot of these are in the list already, is fog zone for preserving all of the areas of outer town hill. They're the next kind of big list that I had wanted to include for this year was doing some work to do that on the project. It's not really it wouldn't be a deep for you per se. It may if there's a little bit more out of the way, but it's better to cause your But I would just, you know, I'd look at our the list that we've prepared for the next five years. Coming Street was one that was actually probably the most obvious. It was the furthest out to that end row. It's been deferred a couple times now. So that would be like the easiest pick to put back into the plan. Um, and we would just review what we had over for the next five years and just pick the ones that make some most sense with staffing capabilities, traffic impact, and the other five. I think it'd be helpful if we had some of those ready to talk about when we do get into the full window and we say, oh, what what, what paving would come next? And then how much that how much that would be helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And like I, sometimes you have a couple. And then we compare what costs were in each we have district and how that out. Mm -hmm. We have prepared over the next like, four to five years what well, the streets that were selected, right? So we'd be generally choosing streets that were on that. The ones that are here in 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Well, you're, right. you're ahead of my sheet here. But, but it is more economical with the streets in the same yes. sort of area. Mm -hmm. where if you start going one on one end of them, like uh, pay a high charge for them to move on. It's not but that, the best yeah, way to be in your back. So yeah. the choice of streets really depends on the amount of the streets. It's going to be some kind of move. So, for example, this is an FY26 list, depending on funding, you can see those streets listed yeah. in there, um, there's an FY20. Oh, right. and yep. So, and I can... that is all, so I think you've got yeah. all those. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the other piece I just want to point out is, yeah, so this is we the following year's potential, but as you're coming straight to the stuff that Zach just talked about. Um, is that this is the general fund only. So this is the street sidewalks and that equipment. There is also the water and sewer budget. And Kurt's going to talk about that a little bit tonight because we've had a lot of questions recently about the underground infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And so there's additional funding for that as well as funding that we're going to modify. So <laughs> this is only the surface work. Fog and crack, that's yeah. to maintain and protect. Yeah. Yeah. That's really important. Yes. Yeah. 
But that's, and that also is, I mean, that's what was done, if I'm not correct, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's what was done on College Street and Bear Street this year, right? Yes. And well, there's that a seems... whole bunch of streets that we've repaved since I've yes. been here right. that need that exact treatment, yeah. right? It's but that, not the Dyers, the Westwoods. But I think it's yeah. important that people, that appears as though that's a newly paved street, you know, it's one of the fogs, you know, that's the effect of it. So it makes it seem like it's one of the things, that's why it's so important and so much less expensive than actually the actual that's to Right. Yes. Like extending the needs. And then the long term, it, it will be very much a financial benefit to the city because you get a lot more length of the year. One other thing, when I actually pulling up these lists helps to, you know, re trigger things that we go to. One of the things that we had talked about internally was um, if we were moving forward with, if we had additional funding, we may want to talk to the contractor that's doing the two and pair up with the Blackwell and Atwood Street making finger trees that are a disaster, right? Um, because you might be able to leverage the contract price, the state contract price. Now, we won't know the bid results, and we don't know whether that's even on the table until the next Friday that we bid and the results come out. And then if we were given the direct down the funding, then we could kind of chase down that avenue, whether it was five. Uh, but that was one thing that we had talked about internally. It would be nice to get route two done and then those little options that really haven't got a lot of attention. We, we can, we do have for each of the capital plan years, we do have detailed sheets that Public Works has put together. And we also have sort of the first iteration and then sort of the things that have been struck from that. Um, and then, you know, what's actually in there. Um, and so we can go through those if you're interested, you know, or, you know, if at this point you're sort of okay with the current construct, you want to see the whole budget and then maybe circle back, we may, you know, do that. Also, so I don't, you don't know what the, the preference is, but it seems like there are kind of a couple ways we could take this, but it seems like there might be a preference for one. And again, for the newer folks on this project, like I said, typically this is, this group has looked at sort of what's in the number and the council itself has sort of just debated the money, you know, how much we should be investing, not that we want to spend council time going for three months. So, uh, Maybe we can spend two meetings on it. So right. We can yeah. real short. <laughs> I may be the only one, but when these come by list and leads has more of a word document than spreadsheets, I want a comparison. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to turn some of this information you sent us into a spreadsheet? You know what? I mean, I, I mean, we certainly can. I mean, I think probably what might be nice is to have everything listed and then have sort of just the years. Right. So then you can see just the you know, sort of even with an X mark, like a, what are the things in the column for 24? And what are, what are the, and we can we could definitely do that. I mean, I think we wanted to also make sure that um, this was digestible just so you could take it at a glance. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that was our intent for just this sort of initial briefing to see, you know, what your thoughts were, um, but we can certainly um, do that. I was just thinking in a spreadsheet, it seems to me in the past sometimes, but then you move that the I in from 23 to 24 or 23 to 25, whatever it moves, it goes right to yep. It starts to be, they, they originate in Excel sheets, right? And so this was actually an effort oh. to make it more digestible okay. this year. <laughs> no, and I, you know, I'd actually prefer to put it back in Excel sheets with the exception of when you start playing this, the shuffle game and trying to, you know, match a budget and figure out all these projects. You have so many variables that you're trying to do at the same time. And like, I'm also generally when I do these first iterations of plans, I'm going back and checking, okay, did we meet, if we did this much level of paving, are we meeting our baseline targets? So I'm using the Excel sheets to sum up at the bottom the amount of paving we're doing to check the balance. So this was actually something that we had talked about this year that we were like, I think it'll be more digestible to put it this way, but we could easily take this information now that it's out and put it in the Excel sheet. It's already there. Anyone else prefers Excel? Yeah, we all we like Excel over here. I like you too. No, you don't. I like Excel enough for this. For my work, yes, but when I'm just 
looking, I just want the data. I just want the fact. That, that's it. There. Oh, we can do both. We've already done this, so we can convert okay. them to <laughs> columns. And I, I tend to look at um, sheets and columns too by the end. So, when we had done the strategic planning, we had talked about like the index, the paving index. Like, does this plan? Set us backwards from that, that we're then going to be having to catch up. So next year, when it's probably going to be another template. Yeah. So one thing when we give the report, we're talking about annual funding. We're not giving evaluation of class, right? So um, when you, if you were to then incorporate the class back into the mix, yeah, our PCI would still probably grow. But if you look at it based on the report that I gave you last year, this the lower level funding. We're probably going to drop a point or two over the next year. I mean, this year we did we invested uh, 1.05 billion in uh, We paid the preserve 4.4 miles of payment. It's the best year that I've, the most I've ever done in terms of payment is this year. So we did take a, a good jump up this year. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we would probably have a slight decrease uh, in that this year. Reality um, when you look at just the past two to three years. But as a city as a whole, uh, that would probably have to increase because of the same project. Yeah, that's what I think it's sometimes good to be had a meeting for the new members, particularly to just talk about more about the cases and the levels of the sector, how you bring it to the sector. I think it's pretty really helpful base of information absolutely well, I suspect you know we're gonna have at least two new members um so <laughs> that's we're gonna need absolutely. to do some many more maybe no. three yeah I think it's more <laughs> so uh you know we I, I we were already thinking you know that we would need to do some Skip you know, some of that work in the spring or long and busy kind of work. We need the folks that yeah. just came yeah. on, but I still want to get caught up. Uh, so yeah, we, that's on our minds for sure. So um, we can maybe leave it here for tonight to just kind of think about the, the planning that we, we've done so far and think about sort of these funding levels. And then from there, maybe, you know, consider, you know, this plan once we move forward with the budget um, and you see what all is in there. And then, you know, we can either, you know, add or, well, add. Yeah. Um, oh, from this. Right. Um, so right, just so everybody's aware that what we've got booked here is in the budget in this first initial FY24 construct um, at level fund from 23. So um, with that, you know, maybe do, do you, do members feel like they would like to have a meeting next week or kind of take it as part of the budget itself? We see, why, don't we see, why don't we see where we are at the end of today? Yeah, okay. That sounds good. All right. Well, thank you very much for hearing this presentation. And thanks everyone else for putting this together.